welcome everyone to the existing boundary and uh, web driver with uh, dev tools integration by gopinath kojay kumar and babu narayanan without any further delay i hand it over to you gopinath and babu all the best hey, thank you hey good afternoon maybe good morning good evening thank you for joining us and uh, this is going to be quite exciting session this is the most happening thing right now in the market with selenium integrating with chrome developer protocol and we would be doing a lot of demos today this is not going to be a conversational it is going to be more of demos and we are going to let you know about the libraries that we built over the time and we'll be sharing you all the things and if you have questions please use the discuss button or the q and a session we'll be happy to address so our intent for today is to talk about how does the selenium web driver and the chrome developer tools api integrate together to make a huge advantage before that and my name is babu i'm the founder of test week we are one of the leading edtech organization in test automation industry and let me turn on the camera just to make sure i'm around okay the second one and gopi is right there with me and he's the chief architect for building the test automation tool set he's the main crew who built the entire library on the cdp integrating with the selenium web driver okay and the intent of today's session is going to be helping you to see how do we make the cdp on java library to integrate with the web driver java that's the intent so what that meant to you is the entire ui automation will become much more interesting to you much beyond what we are truly really doing for example the the web driver as you all know might be you might be working on web driver for a very long time the selenium web driver can interact with the browser only with the dom correct so using your chrome driver or safari driver you might talk to the browser but what may not really possible is some of the browser features right they not be accessible because the scope of the web driver is only related to the dom element so hence you might see some kind of constraint now with that said now chrome developer tools giving you a lot of options for you to integrate let's see how do we merge both of them and make it to work right and before i show you some demos i just want to set the context here uh, if you really follow selenium 4.0 alpha you would have noticed that the chrome developer tools is already in pipeline right it has been built simon is doing a lot of effort in building this entire library however this is something evolving right and still there are few more uh, implementation yet to happen but what we did is we did an independent chrome dev tools java library and we have been using that in our edition of work and the advantage when you use our independent library is going to be when you use selenium 2 or selenium 3 for whatever reason you couldn't upgrade to selenium 4 yet and if you want to use an independent selenium 2 or 3 and still wanted to integrate with dev tools our library can give you that kind of options for you. number 1 number 2 still it can also give you an option of independent solution sometimes there may be a need where you do not want it to use selenium web driver to talk to a browser right like what puppety really does if you want to really do that level of conversation for some reason and you still have an option of using our library which is basically which you can be able to implement it brilliant so i'll with no delay i'll just go and jump on to few demos where i'll be able to explain how we built it and how you can really use it the number one example i'm going to show you is the windows authentication i'm sure most of you would have seen this kind of problem right so if you already if one of you have such problems or the listeners on this conversation if you have similar problem babu we have such problems like this basic authentication just raise your thumb or the hands up please so i'll know how many of you are having this similar problem that basic authentication blocking you to continue with the test brilliant and th thanks for doing that right and with that said i'll just jump on to the scenario right now which can make you to understand i think in the older uh, school of thought there are quite a few people were using different options i think if you remember in the chrome 54 55 edition and also in 74 they turned on and turned off where you can able to pass the username and password right into the url itself but that may not be working always because of the chrome uh, security reasons they don't want to allow that to happen that's one option for you the second option is basically you can install a chrome extension which can listen to your 
uh, authentication window to pop up and you can fill it but that is still broken i think with that said those are all not a great solution i'm i'm sure the solution what we are going to run through may be one fix for all of you in the chrome option so i'll go ahead and give you an example right now so let's go all the way up to one of our url that we are talking i think dave hafner has built a one of the good interesting website the internet kiroka app for you to see most of the example in one of the scenario he has built something called basic art right so if you look at the basic art right here and you would see that it will pop up from the server for you to authenticate the username and password where you have to type in the admin username and password and sign so once we do that it gets you authenticated right here now how do we do this basically if you understand how this particular network request really goes i want to take you all the way to the postman just to give you a hint around how you can really do this right so if you understand how postman really works this is going to be your api calls going back the system right so if you call this back end call right now when i send this without the any username and password you get not authorized and if i go and put the username and password on to my header which is authorization and send it now this request is successful right so you end up seeing the success when you watch this header there is authorization this is your base 64 conversion with the basic as an authorization type right so with that said if you want to really simulate the same thing in the chrome dev tools here is the option for you right before i go there so i just want to give you a glimpse of the library that we built right this is the complete library this is available in the github so we already shared the link in the conference in and we will also send you a few more presentation slide and the link for you to follow so we built a large set of libraries which can integrate for every single action in cdp can be done for example if you are new to cdp i'll send the github link where you have list of methods even types which is written by the chrome developer protocol team and where you will see all this operations in play so let's see how to write this code in eclipse now if you have to write this in java generally i think you all would have aware of this so boniga chias chrome driver where i'm launching to create a independence of the chrome driver and then i maximizing implicitly wait then this is our code base where we are connecting the selenium web driver with the dev tools we are trying to attach the dev tools independently from the web driver again i mean to you selenium 4 has an option for you directly read it as we have built a independent library this is an option for you to integrate web driver this is the first call that you have to make which will help you to connect through the port number the the remote backend port number through which we communicate on to the dev to once you do that we go to the network domain and then through the network domain we intercept it and then we will be able to pass the same header right authorization basics and we were able to do this right so now when we hit this particular request and when we run this this is going to auto authenticate it is not going to even pop up that basic authentication window for you to do that. let me go and run this i pray the demo got it works all good and i'm sure it should so now you get the chrome launching now the network interceptor would have already fed this and hence you did not get any windows authentication in between blocking you to come in so with that said we are all set all good now we went on passing this so i know it is a lot of code but we made it very simple by building some uh, interesting inbuilt library all that you have to call is a static method with a basic auth and pass the driver with the username and password which is able to penetrate through this by ourselves so so basically just call this particular code and you don't really need to code all this right so now i'm also going to show you an another interesting example uh, before i hand over to gopi for further conversation the other interesting example we had in one of our project is uh, we wanted to really work on one of our uh, service now project where we have we don't want to keep logging in every time so the question of interest is can we bypass the login without really going to the username page for specific reasons right so we wanted to bypass the login is there an option for you to do this right so for example in the login same thing we are calling our directly our inbuilt method in the library and then we were able to go to the this particular 
one of the development service now instance and where you don't have to really do it so let me do without calling our inbuilt library and see let's see what happens right now this is basically should redirect me to the login page the second option is i'm going to go and inject the basic authentication behind the screen which should really get me to the login now this is without injecting the authentication screen into it so which means it will put you put me back into the login screen right now so you it says that you are not logged in it's going to redirect me and put it into the login screen this is what happening now let's see what happens if i'm trying to intercept the network and try to call the basic authentication call in case if you really wanted to do this so let's see how do we do this right let's go back and run this and that should help us to bypass the login get into the option of directly into the login page so this is an option for you to play around and if you still work in a project where you have to do a bearer token oauth validation single sign on so if you have similar techniques that you need to do it you can bypass it including your otp authentication that you have there is a possibility to enable to do this and you can directly go into the system. i think that would have given you a broader picture of how we are trying to integrate the cdp and with our library and integrating with selenium web driver that's a beauty so you can continue to work on web driver but you will able to still integrate with the cdp is the goal of it okay now with that said i'll we have some more interesting demos coming up so we wanted to, i know many of you talking about full screen chart or emulating a geolocation or you wanted to wait for a uh, element to disappear or if you are looking at an audio place all that go people take the time to demo you couple of them so that you can take some more interesting example from or to go hi guys good afternoon and thank you very much to give this wonderful opportunity and thank you babu i hope everyone uh, listening my voice right so i will go to show the direct demo few of some demo so babu already gave something um using selenium we can automate the web application right but we doesn't automate the uh, videos flash application something right the dev tools has some api which is nothing but the web audio api using the web audio api we can at least find the running status and the execution duration time what is the current duration time we can do that so i'm going to show the demo for that we already written the code base i directly show that code and just a minute audio player right so i hope you all know the basic things we use generally uh, i take this particular url for showing the demo for just a minute now listen so this is one of the web application okay once i click the play and fast button it automatically play the song right it plays something at the back end i need to validate whether this video is playing or not what is the current state of that video and which time that it is currently running so using dev tools we can easily do this i just want to show something so i'm going to enter into the dev tools Here I'm searching audio. And listen, this is the audio context. It shows the state of the current execution. So currently it's running. So it says the state is running, right? I need to get this information using our APIs. Okay. So using Dev Tools, we can easily do this. we already written the code for this listen i just written the dev tools get web audio and using that first even using the event listener i'm getting the status and i'm getting the change status of current execution while doing the execution in case if the status is changes it automatically pick the information then i launch the browser and click the particular icon and it returns the status so i'm going to run this but i'm going to run in the uh, developer sorry debugging mode right because i need to show the status so i'm going to run this in the debug mode uh, just a minute okay i launched i hope it works perfectly 
so when initially it starts the url the current status is a suspended mode okay now look at this okay just a minute i'm going to run that now it's loading the url once it load the url in that time there is no audio is running right so the mode is the suspended then once i run the next one now look at this immediately the mode is changed so from the suspended it goes to the run mode which means it's playing after that it refresh the screen so automatically it becomes the close so based on my code i refresh the screen so it's automatically closed finally it's uh, suspended and it's quit the browser actually we can do lot of actions with the get web api we return all the apis here uh, with the time limit i want i just want to show we can do anything related to the audio using the web audio web audio api so this is the first one and second the babu already gave the introduction about the layers and the emulations and also the full screenshots right so i want to show the demo for the full screenshot just a minute we already done that right when i start the career in selenium okay actually i in selenium 2 in that time we met one of the scenario uh, we need to take the full snapshot for the entire screen okay in selenium 2 in that time um, it has only taking the visible portion of the screenshot right we use the third party api that the api is the a shot using a shot we achieve that easily but compared to the h shot now the dev tools use a much more a better code and a, it makes the full screenshot very fast so i need to show that to you so using the dev tools we can easily get the full screenshot size so before i'm running this code i want to show something uh, just a minute i just load this particular url okay so i'm going to take the selenium dev application now listen if i use a normal get screenshot as function in selenium it take only the visible portion of the screen right we can do the full screenshot using a multiple technique but here the demo is using the dev tools now look at the screen if i scroll down the screen is very big i need to take the snapshot within the single shot okay using dev tool we can easily do that so the technique here is first i'm going to the dev tools layer and there is a option called dimension just a minute and look at the screen right based on the dimension what we give it automatically resize the screen right so the technique is we need to resize the screen and take the snapshot So, if you want to do this, first we need to take the current full height, width, and height layers, the resolutions of the width and layers of the current active page. Then we need to pass that information in the dimension. Actually, I'm getting the matrix of the current layer. Now, look at my code. using the get layer matrix i'm getting the layout matrix information based on that i get the current width and height information and i'm emulating the screen using this information so i'm using the get emulation function based on that i pass this information into the view port then it's automatically take the snapshot and we wrote the custom function i think everyone know this it will take the snapshot in the uh base 34 mode so we need to convert that so we wrote a separate function to converting the 34 into the file uh in the dump function so we call the dump and my file name is the snap.png and i use this capture screen function i think we already did that maybe i change the uh file name snap maybe i make this the snap123.png so now i'm going to take the snapshot so once i run it it will take the snapshot in the base 34 and it automatically converted it to png format and it display in my current path because i mentioned dot slash which is nothing but the current working directory right listen it's converted it took the snapshot so i'm going to refresh the screen right now 
once I refresh my current project part, now listen, you get the snap 123.png, right? Listen, it's took the full page. Okay, I'm going to hand over to Babu. So bye, Babu, continue with the remaining one. Yeah, brilliant. I think uh, you fundamentally understood the context of uh, we seeing the full screenshot. I think it is one of the painful area you all would have gone through. And with all that said, what we are trying, intending to do is making you comfortable with CDP, right? So now coming back to the CDP, I just want to spend a minute for people who is not very comfortable with CDP. The CDP is giving you a lot of options right here for you to play around, right? If you're very new to CDP, the CDP protocol would give you a lot more interesting information to the API. So you've got a lot of domains. One of the domain, basically what Gopi has shown you is the one which is related to the emulation, right? So we have got everything from the page performance to the profiler and memory, so on, right? So I'm gonna get you to some more interesting example that can help you with. The next interesting example I generally use in our project is basically for the API request and response. I'm sure uh, from the current world, most of the modern technologies which are using currently is sending a request and response as part of your modern technology. So in case if you wanted to capture your request and response, which you see in the developer tools, I think most of you are aware of that, right? So when you go back and take a look at the inspect, and when you perform an action, the network would capture you all the request and response. In case if you want to really capture the request and response along with your Selenium web driver, how do we do that? that that's exactly what we intend to return a uh, even listener, which is listening to the data received. So when you see the data receival of the request, how do we really do this, right? So for, for the example, we have taken and already captured a video because we had a gaming solution that we had. So I'm going to just run the video just to get a comfortable learning about it, right? So let me go and play this video. I'll also walk you through the steps so you get a comfortable stay about it. So this is one of our gaming simple memory game where you can play a four matches. You select a value and you select another value. If it doesn't match, it goes and revert it. Now, if you look at the inspect option on the dev tools, the dev tools is going to show you the network conversation happening which is an API call, it is a REST API call. If you see this REST API really has a request which is going and hitting one of our local host mission and it is sending with the query parameter, the response comes back in a HTML component. But if you perform an action, something like this, this is basically going as a put as a method, right? So the put as the method, your rear query with a query parameter going around it, right? So, but in the same case, we had a negative scenario right here where we got a 400 bar request so we wanted to validate if the request is going right, the response is coming back right. We wanted to validate something like this. I think if you understand Cypress had a similar thought process, but in Selenium, this is completely possible with Chrome developer protocols integration, and you will be able to capture every single request going in and out. The response can be captured. So I we just integrated the network call with the developer tools, and then we are listening to the request which is being sent. And if you see this, this is basically an event listener, which has to look for the request. So we are looking at the event request. And if we, the request is only going to that particular port number 8,000, I'm trying to get the method, if it is a get or a post or a put, I'm trying to do it. Let's see how that really works, right? And this scenario would give you a clear picture if you are coming from a uh, industry where you wanted to automate your modern application, capturing all your requests and responses. And here is a interesting option to do. Right. The Chrome driver currently launching and this should be able to select the game and click on one of the items. Now, if I go back and take a look at the response and here is the method get and that's the endpoint and the response is back. I think you've got a, a reasonably good picture. So with this said, with our library in place or with the Selenium 4 Chrome Dev Tool, you would be able to really do this option very comfortably. How many of you like this option for you, which will give you a power of doing an end-to-end -end automation in Selenium WebDriver right now 
uh, which many of the people were climbing. It is one of the missing portion. And I think you can capture it right now and you can play around. If you really like it, thumbs up, please. So which we will know this is a good option for you to go forward. Brilliant. And thank you. Thank you. So let's go to another interesting example that we've got, right? In one of our scenario where we also had something where we have to emulate a network speed. For example, we want to run on a different speed like 2G or 3G, or we wanted to download. For example, you are connecting, you, you work on a project or an application where you have to test for a different network speed. How do you do that, right? If you really want to do that, we have again an option available in Chrome developer protocol, which can help you to achieve so basically we got something like a connection max connection types can be available so if you go all the way to the connection declaration so you have got uh running against a wi-fi or a cellular 2g 3g 4g i think we are going to add the 5g as well as the progress into this implementation so which will help you to understand if you are running against an application you will be able to see even the upload and the download option so if you see here, our implementation currently giving an option, what is your download throughput you wanted to have, upload throughput you wanted to have, you will be able to have all this value defined. So the, the Chrome will simulate the same situation for you. You don't have to really do this yourself, right? So even if you wanted to run like with no networking on, how does your application really behave? If you want to really do it, you can also be able to do that, everything right here into your scenario. So for example, I'm trying to do with the max speed of my network. Let's see how does it work. And when I'm running with a different speed, I will be able to change this. And this is basically how many bytes you want to really do. So all these are all configurable. And let me see with the internet turning off onto my browser. Let's see how this scenario really works for you. Okay, there we go. So you can you can really play out if you're uh, relatively new to CDP. You can do a lot more things than what I'm going to show you right here. So I turned off and see how this really behaves as a one such scenario, right? So this is something which is going to tell you that the page did not really load. Okay. Then the next interesting scenario could be something which is if you are uh, someone who has worked on accessibility testing on a visual uh, defects or somebody having an uh, visual problems, how do we really test against it? For example, let me show an another example right here. So let me go back and bring okay, so let me dot dev again. Okay, and so you have an option right here on the Chrome Dev Tools, which is recently introduced uh, into the option where you can also play around and change the way of your visual deficiency. For example, there is a lot of different deficiency model you have. Uh, this is something we wrote recently, a couple of weeks back, and you have a different deficiency models available. And based on every deficiency color related eye problem, the color codes of your application might be looking different. So let's see an option right here. So rest of the Selenium code is very same. All that you have to do is you have to emulate it. And in the emulated, you just turn on the deficiency and talk about what type of deficiency you wanted to implement it, and you're all set. Let's see a quick demo, then we'll come back and talk about it. How do we do this? And there we go. You see the colors are very different before, and once the test is done, the color goes on change. So let me rerun again on a slower mode, which can help you to understand what's really happening behind this. Right, let me go back and let me do this, right? If you watch it very carefully right here, the URL is going to run on a different colored system and where you will be able to watch it out. Okay, there we go. And you see the colors are very different and let me go on and run. And once the test is complete, the color will go back to the regular color mode, right? So if you are trying to test against the different visual deficiency, accessibility test, this would be a, one of the greatest way to automate it. 
and this will be a, one of the interesting solution along with the selenium web driver will work for you okay coming back there are a few more tests i wanted to give you i don't, i think i have little more time to tell you the one other test i want to show you is basically i think uh, the common problem many of the people face is waiting for element intractable exceptions or element uh, uh, basically not clickable exceptions are very very common and if you see i'm going to show you one quick example of such problem and let's go back and pick and there we go okay and in this scenario if you watch it and when i click on element there is a element which is popping up which is loading and until this disappears i cannot interact with my element rest of it right now in this scenario if you watch it there is a dev tools available which can help you to understand what's happening behind the screen so if you see something called a layers tab available if you don't see one just do control shift p or command shift p and you will be able to select the show layers and in the layer box you will see this there is a new layer which is coming right here right for example and let's take an another type and if you see there is a div loader is loading right here and this will disappear and done so the best way to deal such problems sir you can watch listen to the layers and if you see the layers are newly introduced or the layers are disappearing you can based on that you can perform a ui actions and that's what i really built it right here and you are doing something like this for example i'm clicking on a element something like this i'm waiting for the layer to get changed and if the layer is getting changed i'll wait and then finally i'll disable and move forward so before i perform an another action this would be something very interesting for you to do it so all these are practically possible with a chrome developer protocol and all that you have to do is we already returned the library for you now if you see the layer is currently running and and you got it see to wait it and there is a waiting so you don't have to write any type of thread dot sleep or explicit wait you're just waiting for the element to disappear and as soon as the layer disappears you are interacting with it so this can be kind of interesting example using chrome developer protocol for you to go forward the other common example i think many of them would have uh, demonstrated but i just want to show you with uh, one of the good example is titan store right so uh, i i think many of you know in india what is titan is all about now we had an example where we have to do uh, test titan for a different geo location right so for, for example now i am in chennai and automatically based on my location if i use my current location it is going to pick my uh, basically the geo location pin code and try to show you something pretty much right here now if you want to simulate the same approach but i don't want to really do this in a local i want to try the same scenario against a different city or something so i would prefer to go and change my geo location sorry uh, i mean interrupted okay so if i want to really do this against delhi so i did the latitude and longitude all right and if you are someone very comfortable about it you can create an enum just call the particular city on it so with accuracy level of 1 i'm trying to run it so right now if you see i'm not putting a pin code or something and this can help you to really do it against running against a different geo location altogether right uh, that can be a very good example for you to really do a geo location test for running against a different geo location right now you are new delhi right here now because i am trying to tell my chrome to use a geo location specific to the latitude and longitude right so these can be a great examples if you are someone testing against different geo location or you want to test how does it really works on a different network speed and so on and the last example i wanted to show you before uh, before we can open up the q and a is how do we really do this against something like a scale element exception i think one of the very common exception you all generally come around a scale element exception right so uh, the the intent of scale element is really coming because the element was there and element disappeared before you start interacting with it 
Now, how do I know that the element really getting changed in the DOM over the time? How do I really know this? The best way to know this is basically going through the process of running this, right? So now with that said, I just want to show you quickly how to do this. Now in this scenario, what I intend to do is I getting the DOM, the entire DOM, right? And then I'm listening to the DOM attribute, which is getting modified. If there is a, because of the application behavior or because of something getting triggered at the background due to which the DOM getting changed. So I'll be listening to the entire DOM attribute. You can also listen to your particular element also. There is a possibility you can listen to your particular element if you want to. And if the attribute or element got deleted, it is no more available in the DOM, you can listen to it and based on which you can trigger some actions by yourself, right? So I just wrote a simple console output but you will be able to write your own scenarios and you can do exception handling based on this. In this scenario, I'm just launching one of our internal page and trying to feed in and changing a value of it. And let's see if the, when I change it, is the listener capturing it correctly or not, is the scenario to capture, right? And these are all the good examples uh, for you to understand what is the power of Chrome developer protocol integration can play around. Okay, so now I change the email address and technically I'm expecting the value more. What has been modified? The value has been modified. What has changed? The value has changed. The listener can listen to the entire conversation for any element. Okay, with that, with that said, I uh, completed most of the demo that I want to show you. Maybe something like uh, JavaScript errors. We also wrote a lot of examples. If you watch out to like security certificates, it's another example. If you're running against, I think this is something uh, many of you might know, but you can still do it in Chrome developer tools. For example, let's say you're hitting this scenario and you will end up something like this, right? Because you don't have a SSL here. If you wanted to bypass and go for it, if you also want to know what error it is, you will be able to capture the errors also using the security, right? Those are all the basic examples that we want to demonstrate. Um, I wonder if we have some time for the Q&A. Um, um, if you have any questions related to the CDPs or the way we implemented it, we are really open to take it further. Okay. Um, Thank you so much. That was an overwhelming session. A lot of demo, I see a lot of value out there. Uh, thank you so much for this. Um, I also want to remind everyone to please rate the session using the poll button. It is right below the discussion uh, tab for you. Um, and uh, I really want to thank again Gopi, uh, Gopinath and Babu Narayan for sharing their experience. It was pretty valuable. And, and we have a lot of questions here. It is overwhelming. So what I'll do is I'll just pick a couple of questions which are, you know, voted um and uh, the question that i can see is uh, from uh, uh tran and he says thank you for your talk uh, but since java i'm using javascript so is there any available library for integrating dev tools with selenium web driver actually uh, uh selenium, selenium. so that's a noise so actually, if, if you are looking for the selenium web driver 4 uh, there is an implementation already coming in in the alpha release. So watch out the space of the Selenium uh, uh, alpha releases on the JavaScript web driver JS. You will see them already implemented. I think it is happening slowly and it would take some time for you to see them fully. But if you are looking for something like what we have built CDP uh, on Java, that is set of libraries. I can post it, I, I'll be available on the launch. I can give you some references for you on the JavaScript. And I'm, I'm not a JavaScript guy, by the way, but yeah, I, I've seen libraries which is used. So I can give you some references which can help you to understand about the JavaScript implementation. Sure, thank you for answering. I have the next question coming in from uh, Pooja Jain. And uh, she asks, uh, um, can this capture browser console errors? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Uh, I meant to say that uh, Selenium 3 itself having a solution for capturing all the console errors. They have the logs available to capture it. Uh, what I have written is for the Selenium 
four with the CDP integration. And again, and selenium sulfide is still available. Uh, anyway, I've checked in my code, and the code can be uh, seen in the GitHub repository for the console errors. Sure, thank you. Uh, there's a next question, and this would be the last question that we'll take. Uh, so DevTools server's functionalities applies to only Chrome, or does it uh, work with Safari as well? If it doesn't work in Safari, is there any workaround to get this code working in Safari? And this is coming from Narendra Prasad. Uh, thank you for uh, asking. Um, uh, truly speaking, currently, it is only the Chrome, right? And uh, uh, there are efforts being taken for the Firefox and Safari. And only I didn't expect the situation to happen uh, for Firefox and uh, Safari, and also for Edge. Edge is being built on Chromium, so the same uh, CDP should help you to do with Edge. So the solutions currently, what we have deployed or what is available in Selenium 4 is limited only for CDP. It is not available for Safari and Firefox. Uh, there is a project happening. We will be building it and then delivering as a solution at this moment.